Back here at home, researchers at the Utah at Utah State University are keeping a close eye on mosquitoes that transport to dangerous viruses like West Nile. As science specialist Ed Yates reports, they're watching the species that may be developing resistance to our attacks. At sunset, Salt Lake City and other mosquito abatement districts around the state attack our most annoying villain. And as the sun rises the next day, it's repeated, this time with granules killing the larvae and water. But at Utah State University, a different kind of attack. Entomologist Scott Bernhardt lets mosquitoes feed on his arm or mechanical baits. None carry dangerous viruses, but he lets these lab mosquitoes do their thing so his team can understand how to control them, especially those evolving populations becoming resistant to sprays and granules. We have mosquitoes within our, in our lab where at 15 to 20 generations, we're starting to see um, resistance um, build up in those populations. Abatement districts want to make sure compounds are safe, but at the same time override potential resistance, especially for species transporting risky pathogens. We're talking about many species inside these labs. For example, here's the mosquito that spreads the dangerous Zika virus. And over here, sand flies from India that can spread a potentially lethal disease. In fact, USU is working with the National Institutes of Health exploring ways to control this sand fly, which in India carries a deadly parasite. While the mosquito carrying the dangerous Zika virus is not native to our state and couldn't survive up north here, southern Utah is a different story. There is the potential for Aedes aegypti, Aedes albopictus to um, to become established in those parts of the parts of southern Utah because of the good climate that's that's down there. Zika is not the only concern. Our native mosquitoes already carry the West Nile virus. Mosquitoes, fleas, even ticks, which in some parts of Utah have been linked to the disabling Lyme disease. USU researchers and abatement districts are looking at the most effective ways to control all of them for the sake of all of us at Yates, KSL 5 News, Logan. All right, Ed, thank you. Dan Beck with us. This was always a tough time as a kid on the 4th of July. Yeah. Like, how long is it going to take to get dark? Right. It's going to take forever. It's like when you wake up on Christmas morning, but you can't go downstairs yet. You just got to kind of pump the brakes. Yeah, so uh, it's been kind of uh, interesting for us. Just a warm day, but there's some other places around the country seeing some interesting weather. In fact, we'll take you to North Carolina.